Hey everybody, it's Travis Van in Jaeger's house and as you can see I'm doing laundry today but I spoke with somebody earlier today about training a narcotics detection dog and it got me thinking about a lot of things that's out there that are commonly overlooked and in this discussion I had we talked a little bit about uh, training methodologies and a scent lab and the importance of having a good scent lab so I decided to make a quick little video to kind of explain my thought process and mentality behind my scent detection training program now the the most important thing that I see is the indication the search pattern and concomitant odors anytime I ask anybody it doesn't matter what what you know a venue it is whether it be UKC nose work narcotics detection or excuse me, um, cadaver uh, searches, things like that. Everybody says those three things are always the worst. So you have to kind of start with the end product and go backwards and find out where you need to start. So the way I th see it is if those are the biggest problems, then work on that first and create a solid indication before you move on. Now in my scent lab, in the beginning stages of training, I utilize scent boxes. Now these boxes have different odors in them and they're there for a specific reason. Um, the first box that I use is just neutral box. It's just my smell and the treats that we use. But that box isn't for odor detection. It is for indication training. So I teach indication as a form of obedience. So a lot of trainers will uh, reward at the source. Um, which means they, they try to make it magically appear or they have these scent boxes that launch balls. Well, what happens is these dogs will go right up on the box and then anticipate the ball coming out or the reward being magically uh, appearing, but they'll indicate and they'll back away. They'll indicate they back away in anticipation. Well, what we like to do is to make the dog understand that I have the reward, but you will only get it if you do what is expected and by creating that relationship with the dog it's working for its reward not because of it um, and what i like to do is a scent box we train the indication once they have that indication down perfectly where i can just send the dog to the box it hits with that indication i mark and i reward then i'll add a second box now the second box is always going to be the odor that I want it to indicate, okay? Um, if it's a UKC dog, it's going to be that UKC odor. If it's going to be narcotics, it's going to be narcotics, explosives, cadaver, bed bugs, whatever the scent's going to be, that second box is going to be that odor. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to send the dog, and these boxes are going to be side by side. Chances are it's going to head for the indication box, but more than likely it's going to smell that new odor and go and investigate. Then I'm going to mark, and reward. Now in that mind I just created a snapshot of that odor and its reward. So now all I have to do is wait the dog out until it gives me the indication. Once it's given me the indication on that odor and not the other box, no matter how I rearrange them, then I know I can add a third box. And these boxes will continuously add on and I have about 12 that I use. And these boxes um, I have like I said earlier, narcotics, explosives, um, UKC, nose work, things like that. But I also have some um, scent that will come into play later. One of the biggest things is uh, concomitant odors such as packaging material. I try to think of the things that people will try to mask the smell of the narcotics and put, incorporate in that training. So if it's coffee, peanut butter, dog treats, or anything like that, I'll put those in boxes. And it only those boxes will only include those odors, so we're not cross-contaminating. So one box is solely dedicated to packaging material. Because in training, a lot of people will roll drugs up in saran wrap, or PVC, or canvas. And now the dog is pairing that odor with the narcotic. Well, I'd rather the dog smell the narcotic and then the other box have all the packaging material. So now I know that the dog is not smelling the packaging material and indicating on the packaging material, but the actual narcotic. So if I pull somebody over that has 16 rolls of saran wrap, I know the dog's not going to indicate on that, okay? So other scents that I like to use, I like to incorporate some really prey-driven scent. Um, I'll take the sterile 4x4 pads and I'll put doe urine, fox urine, um, bird 
scents such as duck, quesant, uh, pheasant, quail, dove, things like that as well. So that way the dog will smell these, smell that animal, and he'll have to work through that natural instinct to go after these animals or to find that animal and work for that odor that he's trying to find for me. Um, with that being said, one of my biggest things I like to do is if my bitch is in heat or if I have somebody that I know that's bitch is in heat, I'm going to go collect some of that heat smell from them because nothing will drive a dog more crazier if it's an intact male than smelling a bitch in heat. So if I can incorporate that into training as well, that's just going to help me on, on patrol later. So other scents that I use, let's see, I use packaging material, duct tape, things like that. Um, narcotics, fox urine, doe urine, uh, dog, um, heat cycle smell, cadaver, bed bugs, UKC nose work, uh, training scent. Oh yeah, um, what I'll do also is I'll take one of these, I'll rub my hands all over it, I'll rub my sweat in there. So that way I also know that the dog's not indicating on my scent either, or the handler scent. So that way I know for a fact there's no cross contamination so I can't lead that dog to a, a false indication because it's not smelling for my scent because in training I bridge that gap away from my scent and towards just that narcotics and then of course the no neutral box things like that so whenever you build your scent lab think about these things what are some things that is going to limit you down the road if you are um, UKC nose work or something like that Think about one of those people might have a dog that is about to come in heat, is in heat, or just came out of heat. Um, of course, you know, law enforcement, that could be an issue as well. So think ahead, create your scent lab around these scents, and start the dog off with confidence and success in the beginning, so that way that end picture is going to be sound and foolproof, okay? So I look forward to y'all's uh, comments and questions. I hope that made a little bit more sense. And I hope that will help you in your uh, training. But just remember, it's getting hot out there. And if you're hot, your dogs are hot. So make sure you give them plenty of water and keep them in the shade and out of those hot cars. Okay, so other than that, safe training and have a safe weekend coming up. Talk to you later.